About 542 million years ago, Earth was basically a desolate place. Four billion years after the planet formed, there weren't any animals living on land yet. The most complex life forms were simple creatures in the oceans. But something incredible was happening beneath the waves. During a span of about 20 million years, right at the start of what we call the Cambrian period, there was a sudden surge of new animal species evolving in the oceans. These early creatures eventually gave rise to the vast diversity of animal life we see on Earth today. However, what exactly triggered this rapid burst of life, known as the Cambrian Explosion, is still a puzzle that geologists and scientists are trying to figure out. The series of dark, craggy pinnacles towering 80 meters above Namibia's grassy plains evoke thoughts of ancient civilization's burial mounds or even buried pyramid tips from ages past. However, these stone formations are not the work of human hands, but rather natural monuments left behind by ancient cyanobacteria. About 543 million years ago, during the Ediacaran period, these pinnacle reefs were built on the shallow seafloor. This was a time when Earth's oceans held very little oxygen, making them inhospitable for modern fish. The seafloor was covered with a mat of microbes, providing habitat for enigmatic animals resembling thin, quilted pillows. These creatures, mostly stationary, grazed on the microbial slime, and in this simple ecosystem devoid of predators, animal life began its evolutionary journey. Within a few million years, however, a dramatic transformation occurred. The quiet world of the Ediacaran gave way to the explosive diversification known as the Cambrian Explosion. This period saw the emergence of highly mobile animals with modern features, arthropods with legs and compound eyes, worms with feathery gills, and swift predators armed with tooth-rimmed jaws. Scientists have long debated what triggered this evolutionary burst. Some argue it was a surge in oxygen levels, while others point to key evolutionary innovations like vision. Recent discoveries, including evidence from Namibian reefs, suggest a more nuanced explanation. It appears that a complex interplay of environmental changes, potentially including a temporary increase in oxygen, crossed an ecological threshold. This enabled the rise of predators and initiated an evolutionary arms race that fueled the explosion of complex body forms and behaviors we see in modern oceans. This is the most significant event in Earth's evolution, says Guy Narbonne, a paleobiologist at Queen's University in Kingston, Canada. The widespread adoption of carnivory, made possible by increased oxygen levels, likely played a crucial role as a trigger. In the modern world, it's easy to overlook that complex animals are newcomers to Earth's long history. For over three billion years since life first emerged, single-celled organisms dominated the planet. Flourishing in environments devoid of oxygen, they thrived on compounds like carbon dioxide, sulfur-based molecules, or iron minerals that acted as oxidizers to break down their food. Even today, much of Earth's microbial biosphere persists using these anaerobic pathways. In stark contrast, animals rely on oxygen, a much richer energy source. Metabolizing food in the presence of oxygen releases significantly more energy compared to anaerobic processes. This potent form of controlled combustion fuels evolutionary innovations such as muscles, nervous systems, and defensive and predatory tools like mineralized shells, exoskeletons, and teeth. Given oxygen's crucial role for animals, researchers have hypothesized that a sudden increase in oceanic oxygen levels to near-modern concentrations may have triggered the Cambrian explosion. To explore this theory, scientists have studied ancient ocean sediments deposited during the Ediacaran and Cambrian periods, spanning roughly 635 to 485 million years ago. In locations like Namibia, China, and other sites worldwide, researchers have analyzed rocks once submerged in ancient seas, examining concentrations of metals like iron and molybdenum. The solubility of these metals strongly correlates with oxygen levels, allowing scientists to estimate historical oceanic oxygen concentrations when the sediments were laid down. 
These studies suggest that oxygen levels in Earth's ancient oceans increased gradually in distinct steps, approaching levels similar to today's surface waters by the onset of the Cambrian period around 541 million years ago. This timing coincides with the sudden appearance and rapid diversification of more complex animal forms, supporting the hypothesis that rising oxygen levels played a pivotal role in driving the Cambrian explosion of life. A significant study of ancient seafloor sediments challenged the prevailing view on the role of oxygen in triggering the Cambrian explosion. Eric Sperling, a paleontologist at Stanford University, led the study, compiling a database of 4,700 iron measurements from rocks worldwide spanning the Ediacaran and Cambrian periods. Contrary to expectations, Sperling and his team did not find a statistically significant increase in the ratio of oxygenated to oxygen-depleted waters at the Ediacaran-Cambrian boundary. Sperling concluded, any oxygenation event must have been far, far smaller than what people normally consider. He pointed out that the assumption of a substantial rise in oxygen levels to near-modern standards around that time likely wasn't accurate. This finding challenges the notion that a sudden oxygen increase triggered the Cambrian explosion. These new insights emerge as scientists are re-evaluating their understanding of oceanic oxygen levels during this critical period. Donald Canfield, a geobiologist at the University of Southern Denmark, suggests that oxygen may not have been a limiting factor for early animals. His recent study proposes that oxygen levels were sufficient to support simple animals like sponges long before the Cambrian period. While Cambrian animals required more oxygen than their predecessors, Canfield argues that there may not have been a significant increase in oxygen precisely at the Ediacaran Cambrian boundary. Timothy Lyons, a geobiologist at the University of California, Riverside, remarks, the role of oxygen in the origins of animals has been heavily debated. He acknowledges oxygen's influence on evolutionary processes, but notes from his own research with molybdenum and other trace metals that the upticks in oxygen prior to the Cambrian were likely temporary spikes lasting a few million years, gradually increasing over time. Sperling's research into modern oceans' oxygen-depleted zones has provided insights into how ancient oceans during the Ediacaran period might have influenced animal evolution. His findings challenge traditional views on the role of oxygen in shaping early animal life. By analyzing existing data and conducting his own studies, Sperling discovered that even in areas with extremely low oxygen levels, less than 0.5% of average sea surface concentrations, tiny worms managed to survive. These environments support simple food webs where animals primarily feed on microbes. In slightly more oxygenated areas, Around 0.5 to 3% of sea surface concentrations, animal abundance increases, but they still rely on microbes as their main food source rather than each other. However, when oxygen levels reach between 3 and 10%, predators emerge and begin preying on other animals. According to Sperling, this modest rise in oxygen just before the Cambrian period could have sparked significant evolutionary changes. If oxygen levels increased from 3% to beyond that 10% threshold, it would have had a profound impact on early animal evolution, he explains. Animal ecology, lifestyle, and body size seem to undergo dramatic changes across these oxygen levels. This rise in predators would have posed a serious threat to Ediacaran animals, which were largely soft-bodied and immobile, absorbing nutrients through their skin. Rachel Wood's study of ancient Namibian reefs supports this, revealing evidence of Claudina colonies that adapted by developing mineralized exoskeletons to protect against predators. These skeletal adaptations were likely driven by the emergence of predators, indicating an early evolutionary arms race for defense. Further evidence from Namibia, Australia, and Canada shows fossilized Treptichnus burrows, attributed to worm-like predators similar to modern Priapulid worms. These burrows suggest systematic probing for prey, indicating an escalation in predatory behavior during the late Ediacaran period. Narbonne emphasizes that the rise of predation during this time disadvantaged large, sedentary Ediacaran animals. Being sedentary became a liability, he notes, 
highlighting the significant ecological shifts and evolutionary pressures that paved the way for the diversification of animal life during the Cambrian explosion. That said, in the transition from the Ediacaran to the Cambrian periods recorded in Newfoundland's stone outcrops, a dramatic shift in Earth's life history is evident. Below the boundary, quilted Ediacaran fossils mark the era's end, while just 1.2 meters above, arthropod trails reveal the earliest evidence of jointed legged animals. Over a short period, possibly centuries, predators drove the stationary Ediacaran fauna to extinction. Tracks from 555 million years ago show primitive grazing behaviors evolving into sophisticated evasion tactics against predators. This shift, enabled by rising oxygen levels, transformed the once two-dimensional seafloor into a three-dimensional habitat, fostering the emergence of complex animal life. And that's that for today's video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.